What's up, Rage and Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Union you're watching the Rage and Nation show. This is just a web series where we talk about all things that matter to me in the world of upcoming films. In this episode, we're going to talk about some recently announced film projects for director James Wan. And of course, director James Wan is most famous for his contribution to the Fast and Furious franchise with the latest sequel, Furious 7, which is both a huge financial and critical success. At the box office, domestically, it has made $350 million. Okay, that's just in North America alone. And it's still in theaters. It's still not done yet. And worldwide, it has made $1.5 billion. Once again, it's still in the theaters. So it's still got some more money to make by the end of its theatrical run. It is currently at the number four spot in the highest grossing films of all time worldwide list. All right. The number three spot is held by Marvel's The Avengers. It is about to take the number three spot. Can you believe that? Typically, you don't expect films like a Fast and Furious franchise to even be in the top ten list. But it's there. It's a huge surprise. And I don't think anybody really expected this. Typically, you would expect films like, um, you know, Marvel films or um, uh, James Cameron films to be in there. But not a Fast and Furious franchise film. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that is quite a surprise. And right now, James Wan is a hot commodity to Hollywood. All right. A lot of studios want him to direct their big films. And it looks like what we have here is some of those studios making their move because, well, we had a couple of um, announcements recently that uh, Sony Pictures and Warner Brothers wants James Wan to direct their big films. Warner Brothers wants James Wan to direct Aquaman, which is which will be part of the DC Cinematic Universe coming out in 2018. And just maybe a few months ago, Sony announced that they want James Wan to direct Robotech. Okay, that would be of course Robotech based off of the 80s cartoon series. I love that series, and I have been waiting for a live action film announcement for a very, very long time. Ever since the announcement of the first Transformers, I was thinking that, you know what, if they're gonna make Transformers and G.I. Joe, they might as well make Robotech. Well, it is finally happening. So, obviously with the success of Furious 7, Warner Brothers has closed the deal for James Wan to make Aquaman. And then, following that, Sony Pictures has closed the deal with James Wan to direct Robotech. All right. Now, a lot of people might be thinking that, well, a huge part of the success of Furious 7 isn't just James Wan. It's also the fact that Paul Walker, you know, he, he was part of this franchise. He's no longer part of this franchise anymore. Uh, he passed on and, you know, it really, it really hit, hit a huge mark for a lot of the fans. All right. It, it really, you know, um, they took it to heart and they really, really uh, felt that the, the, this movie... Uh, meant a lot to them and therefore that's why there's a lot of these huge box office receipts worldwide because fans kept on watching it again and again and again they really contributed to the box office right and you know i i uh you know i won't say that james wan didn't have anything to do with it because he did he gave us a really really exciting sequel i still think that out of the previous three i'm talking about fury 7 fast 6 and fast 5 uh i feel that um uh Fast Five is still the best, and then followed by uh, Fast Six, and then followed by Furious Seven. Furious Seven being the weakest of the three, but still, it is a very good and exciting film. I feel it's very, very action-packed, and um, it, it was uh, engaging from beginning to end. And um, this is a totally great film. Okay, and uh, there's a lot of um, great storytelling there. It is a really great balance of characters um, and and emotional element. It's all there. So in the end, uh, James Wan. It's considered to be a very, very good storyteller, all right? So, which I agree with. But, like I said, a huge part of that chunk of money came from the fact that um, that this was Paul Walker's last um, entry in this franchise. In fact, a lot of fans probably didn't even know that, or don't even care that James Wan is the director. All they care is that, you know, this is the this is Paul Walker's last entry into the franchise, all right? Which I'm pretty sure is what a lot of uh, fans are feeling. And that's why it generated so much money. But the studios don't look at it this way. They look at it as money. Okay, They just look at money, especially studio executives. They just see $1.5 billion and like I said, money talks. 
Okay, so that's why they want him to direct their big films. Once again, Warner Brothers doing getting him for Aquaman, and then um, and then uh, Sony Pictures is getting him for Robotech. Now, where does this all fall in place um, in the in the the general timeline of things? Well, James Wan obviously um, he directed A Fear Seven for this year. It's 2015. 2016, he will be um, releasing The Conjuring um, 2, The Enfield Poltergeist, which I have no interest in because I'm not a fan of horror films. I just can't handle them. I scream out loud in the theaters. So uh, yeah, I can't handle it. So I won't be watching that film. But Aquaman is coming out in 2018. All right. If Aquaman is coming out in 2018 and typically big films, I'm talking about big summer tentpole films, usually take two, uh, two years to make. That would mean that Robotech is coming out in 2020 at the very, very earliest, okay? They got to stick with that timeline, obviously, because he's fully booked, all right? Conjuring 2 in, in 2016, two years later, Aquaman in 2018, and then two years later after that, Robotech in 2020. Now, the release date for Robotech is not, has not been officially announced. Only Aquaman has. But uh, like I said before, at the very, very earliest, if he's going to jump into another big project right away, Sony will have Robotech released for 2020. And which is a very, very crazy thing because uh, Robotech in itself is kind of like a Transformers style, uh, a, uh, um, um, I guess, a, a, a series. You know what I'm saying? I won't say the story is like Transformers, but it's le at least it's got some transforming elements in it. And I mentioned this. Because if Michael Bay were back to direct Transformers 6, then we're going to have Transformers 6 directed by Michael Bay and Robotech directed by James Wan going head to head in the same year in 2020. Isn't that insane? Okay. <laughs> Because Age of Extinction uh, came out last year in 2014, they want to go with the three years later um, um, continuing franchise sequels. All right, so so Transformers 5 in 2017, three years later after that, that would be Transformers 6 in 2020. Okay, so man, they're gonna go head to head. It's gonna be all out 80s cartoon live action warfare. <laughs> so that's gonna be really really crazy. Now, am I excited about James Wan? directing Robotech, I'm going to say that I am cautiously optimistic, okay? I'm optimistic because, you know what, he directed a really great action film, that's Fury 7. I think he's a very, very uh, 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 um, decent storyteller, all right? Um, I, I feel that he knows how to balance characters. Robotech is a very character-driven story because there are a lot of characters and there's a lot of emotion in it. Um, and uh, we've seen with Fury Seven that you know he's able to deliver that kind of um, that kind of um, atmosphere to us, that the energy to us. So um, that is something that uh, I'm looking forward to. It's solid. If you wanted another d to director to direct Robotech, it's too late for that. We're getting James Wan. And uh, the only thing that we have to, uh, to, you know, for reference as how he does with action is Fury 7, all right? We'll see how he does with Aquaman. Hopefully, he doesn't mess that up. And, uh, you know what, that'll be our, uh, our um, you know, our, our little bit of uh, a teaser for what things are going to be like with Robotech, all right? Everything before that, uh, apparently everything before, um, or actually, as a matter of fact, everything before Fury 7 was all horror films. He was uh, responsible for writing and producing a lot of the entries into the uh, uh, the Saw franchise, along with uh, Insidious. But he is also responsible for one of the most critically and financial, uh, financially successful horror films of all time, and that would be The Conjuring. That was a really, really uh, a big hit. Okay, so he's got his hits, and uh, he created a franchise with Saw. And maybe he's about to create another successful franchise with Robotech. I hope he does. Because Robotech is a series, a cartoon series from the 80s that is very dear to me. I would really love for him to do it right. All right. Like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. Uh, but we'll see how things go five years from now. That's 2020. Okay. Had they picked another director, we could probably get Robotech, the live-action film, sooner. 
But Sony was very adamant about getting James Wan. After all, they did talk about this months ago. And they finally got him. Alright? So there you have it. That's all I got to say in this video. This is pretty big news. How do you guys feel about this? Let me know in the comments section below. And there you have it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name is Alexi. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Well, we get a lot of that in San Andreas. So they've pretty much followed the same formula as any other disaster film out there.